Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Well, today we are going to revisit one of the tests that I did uh, maybe two years ago, I think about maybe even a year ago or two years ago, I really don't remember. Uh, but it was in regards to how does the default white pixel or the screen whiteness between different monochromatic e-ink devices compare and stack up relative to each other. I see often the common that, oh, this screen is so much brighter than the other. And occasionally I do remind people that we do have uh, uh, optical illusion element as well, and that the dark frame will always, if a, if a device has a dark frame, you will always perceive the screen a little bit brighter than you perceive it to be on a screen with the brighter frame. And that is a consistent thing. That's just how our vision works. So what I always do with this test is under the same exact lighting condition, shot and the camera conditions, everything perfectly fixed. I take photographs of the same exact area in the same exact physical spot, like all things exactly the same. I desaturate those images and then I measure out the average value to understand what is the actual screen whiteness of each of these devices. This time I'm not including any of the color e-ink devices simply because I don't have any, but we've also established already that they are far, far darker. And you can check out my previous video for that. Uh, but though they are far, far darker, like there's a huge discrepancy between a monochromatic e-ink device and a color e-ink uh, device up until we see Galley. So the Gallery 3 screen is going to be interesting and that one is definitely going to be measured out around here as well. So the reason why I redid this test is because I want to standardize the screen whiteness as well as one of the measurable scores in the future and upcoming tests of uh, devices that come out so that we have a percentage to kind of compare and a chart to compare against other devices so that you know what you can expect. So here you can see the actual collage of the tests or the devices that I have retested now. And we are starting with the printing paper that is at the value of, I remember it was 222 out of 256. You will see the percentages of pure white. So a white paper is not pure white unless you actually glow a light through it, in which case it becomes to be glowy. But that is our reference point. And then we have Mobiscribe Origin, Poke 2, Sage, Scribe, Remarkable 2, Supernotes, A5 and 6X, Note Air 1, Nova Air 1, MatePad Paper, Paper White, um, Kindle Paper White, uh, Quirk Logic, Quirk Logic Paper, uh, Bookstab Ultra, Kobo Ellipsa, and Remarkable 1. And these in this collage here that you can see are arranged from brightest all the way to the darkest. Now, as you can see, the, the differences are very, very small, but as you go along, but if you compare Remarkable 1 to Mobiscribe Origin, then you can see that there's actually quite a bit of a difference. Optical illusion aside, it's much nicer to actually have a proper number associated to this. And that's exactly what I did this time. Sampled the pixel value and then converted and compared it to the printing paper uh, in the same lighting conditions. So if the printing paper in same lighting conditions is at 100%, this is how these devices or the screen whiteness of these devices compares to it. Needless to say, this is without the front light turned on obviously, because that would be completely defying the point. So none of this had a screen uh, front light turned on. Hopefully that's something that people can keep in mind. So we can see from here that despite what we would normally assume that the e-readers should automatically be, be the brightest ones, that's actually not the case. Very, very surprising is that Mobiscribe Origin is the brightest device from this pack. And that's at 88.34% of the whiteness of a printing paper, which is actually quite surprising. 
Closely followed by a Books Poke 2, not too surprising since it's an e-reader so it doesn't have a Wacom layer and it doesn't have all the stuff that's necessary to actually slightly darken the screen. But then we have another one which is Kobo Sage, which is writing capable but that's an active writing so that one still makes sense and it's basically the exact same whiteness between Poke 2 and the Sage. We can also see that the Kindle Scribe falls also in that exact same category and offers excellent screen whiteness despite it being writing capable as well and it does have the Wacom EMR layer on top. So that screen just rocks. It's just awesome how they managed to do this. 300 ppi at 10 inch, brightest 10 inch note taking capable device and the fastest writing latency on that device. Now if it only had any capabilities that you can actually use all of this awesomeness, now that would be even better but unfortunately it's completely held hostage and it's the biggest waste of awesome technology that I've seen in a very long time. Anyway, moving on to Remarkable 2, which is actually following the Kindle Scribe quite, quite closely, as do the Supernote A5X and A6X, as they all three have exact same screen whiteness performance. Then we have the Books Note Air 1 with that screen protector, so that will definitely affect the screen whiteness a little bit, and we can see that it's 86.55. My guess is that the screen whiteness of the Note Air 1 without the screen protector that I applied on top of it would be closer, if not exactly the same as the 87%, but I think this is the result that's also meaningful to know what to expect when you apply a screen protector of some kind. And we have several of the same values here, which is the Nova Air 1, uh, Huawei Mate Pad Paper, and the Kindle Paperwhite 2021 is actually in this category. So the Kindle Paperwhite that everybody is like, oh, it's the brightest one of them all. No, it's not. Measuring it in a control setting, it absolutely is not. Kindle Scribe is by a fraction, but 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 almost by a whole percent, brighter than the Kindle Paperwhite. And that's that black frame that I'm talking about. You have a big black frame and a small black, uh, white square, it's gonna look bright because that's what your eyes are doing it. But when you isolate the optical confusion or illusion or whatever you may wanna call it, when you eliminate that and you just measure the actual results, this is the factual result that you actually get. So very interesting for me to see that. Then we have Quirk Logic Paper at 85.2%, quite a bit darker. Books Tab Ultra, surprisingly, quite a lot darker than the rest of the books devices here without any screen protector uh, applied on. So basically, Books Tab Ultra is by a whole two point something percent darker screen whiteness of it is darker than on the Nova Air or the Note Air 1. Interesting. And it's the exact same type of darkness between Tab Ultra and the Kobo Ellipsa. Again, interesting. And at the end, we have the Remarkable One as the darkest one at the 83.86% of the whiteness of the paper. Now, for anyone who's interested, like, okay, but how much darker are those uh, color e-ink devices or basically Kaleido screens? Well, I, if I remember correctly, they were at around 72 to 76% or even less than like something around 70-ish percent of the screen whiteness of the paper. So by a huge margin, they are darker than any of these devices here. So that's something that you absolutely have to keep in mind. All right, so we've done that one as well for 2023. And slowly I'm trying to get a standardized set of tests that we can actually repeat and have for each of the devices and maybe sometime in the future to offer on mydeepguide.com as well a table result or basically like a huge data set that is basically you can compare the devices maybe and things like that but that's a big big job to implement and to actually do but it is something that I would like to implement so it's just that time is always the problem.
because I do so many things and this is not the primary one. So I have to allocate time for these things. But this is a step towards that direction, standardization of tests and data so that we have more comparable results that can be used in a data set and that people can directly compare and get their info from. I hope that you found the video useful, informative and all sorts of things. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell down in the description below to get notified when new videos come out on My Deep Guide. Also, check out the mydeepguide.com slash shop for the My Daily Organizer 2023. It's a hyperlinked PDF document that's an organizer that satisfies all of your yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily, professional or personal needs. And you have the links in the description down below for the MDO playlist, which describes and shows you exactly what the product is. So you can check out if that's something that interests you or not. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.